really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Yes, this is Seriously Speaking. My name is Adesuwa Onyenokwe. On the show today, we're talking seriously about an area where I have personal concern, and most Nigerians do. The area of the kind of service providers that you use in your own private space. Nannies, cooks, drivers, or even people you employ as staff. How many people actually know where those that they've employed at home come from? Now, the inspiration for this story actually began maybe last year, when there was this viral video that most Nigerians saw of a case of proper ill-treatment by a Ugandan household somewhere in Uganda. And people said, oh, how terrible. But the truth is we have all those stories every day. And in recent times in Nigeria, there was a very popular case of a woman who lost three of her kids in a kidnap case where she had hired a nanny offline or online from a service provider. And things like that make you wonder, what makes us act the way that we do? That we open up our homes to people that we don't even know. Are there ways around it? Because most of us are actually helpless. Are we really that helpless? So today I have titled the edition, Security of Those Around You in Your Home, Caution. And I have experts in the house who are going to look at this. If you don't go away, you'll get to experience another great time talking seriously about an issue that affects all of us in ways that we can find solutions to them. Welcome. Don't get robbed because you won't read the news. Get all the news on your smartphone, powered by Easy Blaze. Etisalat, now you're talking. Yes, folks, I'm returning on screen with a photo that you're seeing in front of you, which is of a young lady, well, not so young, a young lady called Angela Okere. You see her in the picture with a banner across her waist saying happy anniversary. And then you have four kids surrounding her. That person is Angela Okeri, like I said, and she has been with the Agbim family for 10 years as a nanny and a housekeeper. So the children are celebrating their nanny who spent 10 years, and I have, I have the, what's that? They made, a, they made the crown for oh, her. They made okay. the crown for Let her. Let me come back to the studio and show the person who's hired that nanny. Mrs. Agbim, but yes. Amara is the one that I know. Yes, Amara. Amara. Agbim. It's yes. nice to have you on Thank you for Seriously having Speaking. You. Thank to talk you. seriously about nanny issues. Yeah. You know, but you know, you run a nanny academy. Yes, I do. How many Nigerians or how many Lagosians do know that there exists somewhere in this country a nanny academy where you can train nannies or well, how does the academy work? Before I go to Angela's story. Oh well, the um, the academy recruits nannies, trains and places them to work in homes. Isn't that a risky job? Oh, that's what I hear all the time. It is risky, but I put my mind to it. So I haven't encountered any negative outcome since I started so. Um... Anyway, tell me the story of Angela. I find it interesting. There are very few people who can actually say, this nanny has been with me for 10 years. Now, mm -hmm. you've gone a step further by celebrating that nanny. Absolutely. Yes, um, Angela, I had her actually um, in the ninth month of my first uh, Pregnancy. That's my first daughter over there. Okay. You know, so before we had the baby, I had agreed with my husband. I said, you know, I'm not going to hire a house girl. You know, the traditional house girl that we know. Mm -hmm. I want a proper nanny. You know, from movies I've seen while growing up and all of that. That was what I wanted to reenact. Like and we the, had uh, what do you call it? Of music. Exactly. You know what I mean. You know. So we went ahead, interviewed several candidates, and then we selected her. And so she resumed. In the ninth month, it was in September 1, 2004, and then I had my first baby on September 21st, 2004. And we've stayed for, you know, 10 years now. This is the 11th year, actually. 
So tell me, is it that you decided to hire a housekeeper and not a, a, a nanny and not to help? What's the difference and how did you go about finding a housekeeper and a nanny and not a house help? Oh, well, uh, the job of a nanny dovetails into housekeeping, mm -hmm. especially around the children. That's absolutely Exactly. Right. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to have a, a conflict of interest, you need to streamline you know, the activities and the duties that your nanny will be performing to you while she works. You know, so how I went about it was, Angela was already experienced. I didn't just pick her from, you know, the streets. She was already experienced as a nanny, worked somewhere else in the um, Ikoi for an expatriate family. You know, so I hired her and then, you know, she came on. So how, with that kind of mindset, okay, let me first of all, I don't know whether she's the one that inspired your setting up of the academy five years after. Yes, she did. She did, but then the inspiration also came from, um, after I had her in my home, most of my friends who came around, they were admiring her. Please, Amara, how did you get her? Can you help me find a nanny? Can you help me find a nanny? And you know, that was where I started nursing the dream of, oh, actually running this service for mothers, mm -hmm. especially working moms. But you're originally an education graduate. Exactly. And then you went to the Lagos Business School to oh, go and yeah. learn um, communication strategies and stuff. I didn't like. start immediately. Yeah. I had actually um, started with publishing a work-life magazine because my interest is work-life balance. You know, when I came to Lagos as a migrant with my... <laughs> from Inugu. <laughs> oh, yes, so from Oweri. Okay. Not from, exactly. Uh -huh. You know, I was interested in having a peaceful, quiet life family life the way we had it down at home. But of course, my husband used to go to work very early, come back very late, and I revolted. Revolted <laughs> by publishing the Work Life magazine. You know, so while I was publishing the magazine, I did a research on how women are actually balancing their work and life. And I did a particular focus on nannies, and that was where I stopped publishing and focused on, you know, providing this service, which I believe is a work life solution. So you found, you, found, you found a niche and decided to fill it. Exactly. I'm surprised that you would be courageous enough to do that because when you give somebody a nanny, it means you're standing behind the person that you have given out as a nanny. Oh, well. Like um, a sort of guarantor. Not exactly. Okay. But then to a large extent, yes. Before I started, I had to do some research. I had to look around on the internet, look everywhere. You know, how can I do this? How can I put structure it? To it. And that was where my experience from Lagos Business School came in very handy, you know, because I already so had that structure. <laughs> oh, yes, it wasn't wasted at all. You know, so I had to, you know, structure it and found out where and where to model from. I had to take a trip to the United States. I went there, I saw what they were doing, and then I came back. When I started, my husband was looking at me like, Are you okay <laughs> after all the investment? You know, is this what you're going to end up doing? But then I pushed it and you know, today he's one of my biggest fans, mm -hmm. you know, supporting me. So in, in you doing that also, apart from providing the service, you're also trying to balance your own life Absolutely. by being self-employed. Absolutely. But then, in fact, Angela has helped me a great deal because without her there, I wouldn't have been able to, you mm -hmm. know, discover this part of me and do this work that we're seeing today as Nani Academy. Did you see that story, the one I was talking about, about the Ugandan uh, house help that was really, you know, particularly um, wicked to to a child and jumped oh, on the yes, child. Oh, yes, I, I did see it. You know. I saw it and, uh, of course, it was a sore sight. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't something that any, any mother would want to believe their child you know, goes through. And uh, I had to respond. I featured an article in our blog. You know. um, What's the blog? The blog, thenannyacademy.com. <laughs> yes, you know, so I had to feature an article. And what we're discussing today is part of what I already said there. How do you get someone into your home? it makes a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. At the end of the, the process, the source. I, exactly, yeah. Could you also be, maybe sometimes, women are in a fix. Mm. You have important work to do, the kids are there, somebody's gonna take care of them, and the nanny has just left, and yeah. then you want somebody. Well, um, when people come with that kind of pressure to me, I tell them to, you know, take it. This is something that you can't afford to say, you're feeling it in like you're just going to a barn or supermarket to buy something and feel back or feel your, you know, pantry. No, you have to, you know, have a, um, an interim plan. You know, so I, I, I believe that every other mother, that's a mark of a successful um, working class woman. You need to have a circle of support. So you could have someone whom you could, oh, please, could you Enjoy. do mind my child? But then the academy also has started doing temps. 
Okay. Yes, yeah, so we offer temporary services Manitime. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we get someone who can just come and stand in. That may not be your ideal nanny, or you may not ordinarily afford a nanny, but the person will be able to stand in. But then that's originally a staff of the nanny academy, not intended, you know, to be placed. So, Why we now get, you know, a permanent person into your home. If you're talking about the source, has, it been, has this been a good business for you? Oh, yes, it has. If it hasn't been, I would have stopped. This is our fifth year. Well, you don't advertise. Oh, well, because of security. You, I find out that um, when you advertise, you see all sorts of people. So most of our business, you know, interestingly, are from referrals. So the nannies refer their sisters and exactly. then the so women that chain. you give them to refer their friends. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. then we, it's easier for us to choose because we don't have social security here mm -hmm. where we can easily, you know, clock into the system and check someone's data. So we had to use this referral system. Mm -hmm. It actually makes business a bit slow, but then safety is more important. So, I mean, but I'm sure what, you must have heard very horrible nanny stories. <laughs> horrible? Yeah. At the academy. Well, I don't know whether everybody that comes out of the academy never comes back with it. The worst, the worst story I've heard was that uh, Ugandan, uh, you know, mm -hmm. video, yeah. Mm -hmm. But since we started our process, I haven't had any story that is so out of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. no. So it's all about the source, right? Yes, it's about the source. What about the 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 person who's hiring the per you know? Is there things that we do wrong when we hire nannies or you know? Absolutely. I mean, when you get a nanny. You need to know that the nanny is also a human being like you. So they have a life, and you need to respect that. Now, I mean, when we talk about respecting the rights of the other person, you say your rights stops where um, yes. the other person is exactly. Mm -hmm. So if we can always remember that when we hire these nannies, then I think we'll have better relationships with them, mm -hmm. you know, on the long run. So relationship with them is one thing. What about the issue of ensuring that your house, your home is secure? Well, in ensuring that your home is secure, like I said, if you hire from the right source and then you check, I mean, the, your source, is it a legitimate source? Because that's very important. When you get a nanny from a legitimate source, a legitimate source means, um, you know, a source I could say, oh, it's a legal entity, it's registered, uh -huh. it's traceable. Mm -hmm. And then when you have that source, what are the terms? You need to look, I mean, you, you can't get nothing for nothing. Mm -hmm. They have to give you, you know, what we call terms and conditions. Are you affordable? Oh, yes, we are very affordable. Because cost is an issue for most mothers, you know, so I don't want to spend money, uh, you know. We are not very expensive. Mm -hmm. We have a minimum uh, registration fee of 7350 Okay. And then, yeah. They pay something affordable. They That's pay something affordable, so, but yes. At the end of the day, it's all about ensuring that things work. Absolutely, and if you because have to... we have to do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, that's what I tell I, you. We have had zero incidents of, yeah, we've had zero incidents mm -hmm. of security. So, I mean, what are you talking about? So I only Do you have a queue people of people waiting? To get can, jobs. Yeah, no, waiting. Like, I come, I want a nanny, and then I have to wait for two, three weeks or four weeks. Oh, well, what I found out is, you know what they call the ripple effect of time. Yes. Now, this is five years down the line, so we are like... You know, we are grounded mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of nannies in our database. Mm -hmm. Same way we have lots of uh, families. So, you know, the waiting time can only extend for a particular client or family looking for help. If they are looking for something specific, they can't see in those available. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. But we don't have a long waiting time if you want Okay, someone. I'm going to take a break because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about the source, right? Yes. And then I think a source like yours, you work with credible organizations like Security Check Company. Absolutely. So I, because we got to see the Ugandan story because mm -hmm. the picture was captured by mm -hmm. somebody. Yeah. Obviously, the girl didn't know. So I, I want to bring in someone who's an expert in that area, you know, in Nigeria, strangely, who don't even know things like this exist. And then we'll talk about that and wait for when we will all engage on how to help mothers to identify who a real a good nanny is and otherwise. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amara, I appreciate it. Thank you. My primary medium is television. I love television. I also facilitate conversations between people and companies. I have to research my subjects, the people I'm going to talk with, the people I'm going to be with. My IT guru said to me, we have to switch you to a tisselat. I said, why? He said, for Roman, for sense. I haven't regretted it for a second. I get into a new country, automatically I'm switched on. And you know the best part? I don't have to pay for all the incoming calls.
There's a young lady that I've recently heard about. She's a fashion designer. Not only has she pulled herself from the most incredible odds, she's also been awarded internationally. That is the kind of person I'll fly to go talk with wherever it is she is in the world. I'll tell you a secret. My former network, I was with them from inception. I switch only because I found a better partner. Switch it to quality today. FT Salat, now you're talking. Now, that was a terrible story, but it only happened, and we could only see it, simply because somebody had a camera in their home that pictured it. And I have an expert in the house. Mr. Kola Ulubodi is described as one of Africa's top background screeners. What's of a better word? It means you do security checks to check people. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank you, Adisha. It's nice to have you, Kola. It's a pleasure. You know, it's a pleasure. But I always wondered, when you grow up in a home where there are eight boys and one girl, <laughs> all of you playing ruffle ruffle in the... How did your mother manage? Well, she's still alive, is she? Yes, she's still alive. She's, um, she'll be 73 this year. Wow. Um, of course, those days, I, re I used to remember we played football in the sitting room. So we need to just move out all the chairs mm -hmm. and then... Um, don't mind what is going to break. <laughs> because you see, your mom, did you guys ever have a nanny or a house help or that kind of thing in your home? Um, interestingly, uh, for most part of the uh, growing up years, we never had a nanny. It was just us and our mom. Mm -hmm. And um, she understood us. Uh, she connected with each and every one of us and she just knew what to do she knew to take look, care of every one of us. When she looks at this one in particular, he knows what she, to she do. She just knows. But she was home. Or was she working? Was she a working mom? At the point in time she was working, before even at work, she makes sure that she's at home most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, she never really picked um, a regular uh, fixed hour job. Okay. okay. So most times she may be in, in the morning, um, we have to our office, I it's mean, place of work. Contract, yes, yeah. she does contract maybe when we are in school, and she must be there by the time we are back from school. Well, they would say that time life was good in Nigeria. Life is different. Most mothers are working in high tension. Okay, you know what? Before I talk about the nanny thing, you okay. started off your business. You are a demographer by training. Yeah. You know, you started off your background security check. You call it BCI, background, background check international. Background check international. But you obviously didn't start trying to check backgrounds of nannies and drivers and cooks. Uh, no, that you was provided not what... services for corporates. Yes, initially it was more for corporate. It was um, because uh, background check actually came out of recruitment. And um, that was what we started with. And one of the things that made us to go into background check was because most time, most of the time when we source for um, um, staff yeah. for our clients, the question they always ask is, can we vouch for these guys? Mm -hmm. uh, most times they say yes, but deep inside we say, can we? Yes, they did well during interviews. Their resume looks so impressive. And so we just said, don't let us keep saying yes, because one day this thing may actually be rank. So before we say yes, those days we need to check one or two things out about them. So when our clients say, can you vouch for them? We say, yeah, at least we checked um, one or two things about them. We think we are, they are correct. What does checking mean? Does it mean like all those spy you send this? You no, know? no, no. When it comes to background check, majorly what it entails is um, claims verification. So if um, you employ a staff and it tells you, I actually graduated from this particular school, I worked with AYZ complaint. Um, these are my referees. I don't have any police problem and everything. You need to verify all those claims. We need to go to the school he actually claimed to have graduated from to be sure he, he actually attended the school. Mm -hmm. And from experience, we've been seeing a lot of funny things. Mm. Uh, people that actually never went to University, particular schools, yeah. but they will show you certificates, mm -hmm. including me medical doctors. Um, it's wow. actually as bad as that. Uh, people that stole money where they used to work before, and everybody leaves, come to you, they look like angels. It's when you go back and run things like, like we call previous employment check, and you go to the former um, employers and try to find out uh, who this that person was when he was there, the performance, the character, attitude to work, and then um, we find a lot of funny things. Of course, not all the time. Like we tell people, background check is not witch hunting. <laughs> it's just for us to be sure of who we are taking. Mm -hmm. You told me this is who you are. I well, I believe you, but I need to be sure mm -hmm. that um, I can trust you. 
So not until you run a check on someone, you can't really say, I know him. So now, by not that you also do security cameras. That's why I ran that video before. You also install security cameras in people's homes or offices and well, things like that. Wait, is wait. it a gradual progression to that point? Or yes, what? it's a gradual progression because um, we started with corporate background check, but over time we discovered that background check is needed in virtually every um, facet of our society. And um, today, one of the things that we are grappling with in, the, in Nigeria is kidnapping. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, uh, the vulnerable ones are the members of um, our families, the younger ones most especially. And so um, when we talk about security, there are two aspects to it. We have uh, the hardware aspect to it and then the human aspect. The hardware aspect is what can actually give you some um, level of information that will um, guide you and make you know what is happening behind your back. And some comfort. Like yes, some comfort. From, yeah. So that's, that's um, where the, um, the gut gets started getting into the, into the old play. Mm -hmm. But even apart from that, the first line of, um, of, of security that we always advise to people is that you need to know even the people you are um, getting mm -hmm. engaged with in the first instance. Mm -hmm. um, what we know is that there's always a trait in life if someone is going to do something in your own home, there is a likelihood that it has happened somewhere before. Mm. So that's why you need to check um, the people you deal with, check their background. Instead of even getting people, any people passing into your home, mm -hmm. and then you now place cameras all the place, suspecting that something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. First, be sure of who you are bringing in. Then double check, or be double sure of what you are doing by placing cameras just to be sure what the people do when you are not at home. I see you work closely sometimes with Amara. It's like you started adding nanny, or I mean, domestics. Yes, support. when all these things started happening, I actually got to meet Amara like five years ago um, when uh, Nanny Academy started. And um, we seriously, I mean, got talking about our grand check. Um, with the way Nigerian society, I mean, Nigeria is, you can't take anybody at face value. But we do. Yes, that's what we do. And so I actually, at that point, uh, myself and Amara got talking that you need to add background check to whatever you're doing. That's mm -hmm. what gives it credibility. Because if, if I'm going to source for a nanny from you, I'm going to ask, do you know this person? Mm -hmm. Can you vouch for her? Can I hold you responsible if anything happens? Mm -hmm. You understand? And um, the unfortunate one that just happened in Nigeria, the um, uh, Orekoya yeah, family, yeah. losing three children to a nanny, that resumed um, a day before. A day before, and by the second day, she's gone. She was gone with three children. Um, so if uh, Amara was the one that actually sourced, you and, would have um, gone gave, to grab Amara. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Amara won't. Uh, she would need to answer some questions. So that's why, um, as much as possible, um, I know she does have some references, mm -hmm. which is okay. But um, with the way things are, more needs to be done. More needs to be done beyond the fact that, oh, I got some references. Mm -hmm. Because we've even seen um, over time that people even, um, they, they, they sort of plan things. Amongst they, themselves. They I plan, mean, it's, really, it's a syndicate thing now that we have. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's it. So if you are asking for referees, you will get referees. But it's all a syndicate thing. The referee, the yeah, the referee is just part of, of the whole show. You know, it's just like the Orekoya um, um, problem that we have. The incidents that we have. The had. lady said, yes, I, ha I have a guarantee. I have somebody that can stand for me. And the family actually called. And the man was speaking on the other side like a gentleman. I said, yeah, I can guarantee her. She's a good girl. Anytime you want me to sign any documents, I'm ready to do it. I can do anything because of Mary. Akinloye, not knowing that it's actually part of, part of the game plan, you, you understand? So we, we need to do more than just um, getting referrals. people... Um, uh, referrals. Referrals uh, most times can help, but when it comes to, you know, it, it, it's a different ball game if it's an, uh, a corporate setting. If you give us wrong referrals and at the point we've discovered that you're not who you say you are, we send you away. Um, so far it's a matter that you're not just competent in what you're doing, we'll tell you to go. Mm -hmm. But when it's like bringing a stranger to the home to that plans everything oh. and now packs um, children away, some will come. There's another one, it was in the paper some days ago, came 
today, by the second day, was gone with valuable goods of the, of the family, what, like 40 million or so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, those are some of the things we are grappling with now. So we need to be, number one, uh, security conscious, more of it now. And we need to really be sure of the people we really relate with. Okay, interesting, because I, I will... I will... Keep you back in the studio as usual for us to engage on the panel because I want to bring in a mother now. Okay. I mean, I have a young woman who is a mother herself and has chosen to find a solution to mothers in cosmopolitan cities. Okay. And uh, I'll take a break and I'll return for that. Thank you, Kola, okay. for being with me I'll on this sure. session. Thank and you thank you for much. watching. We'll continue in a bit. There are business ideas, and then there are outstanding business ideas. The search is on again for the most outstanding business idea in Nangja in the Etisalan Easy Business Millionaire's Hunt Season 2. Think you've got a viable business idea that's an edge above others? Then enter it for a chance to win 2 million Naira grand. To participate, recharge 3,000 Naira on your Easy Business line. Dial star 345 star 3 hash to pay for 3 million month subscription text yes to 5885 to get a unique code and url with which you will submit your business idea the 10 best ideas will each receive 2 million naira cash grant the top 50 ideas receive free training at enterprise development center free office equipment and phones to be one to the easy business millionaires hunt season 2 empowering small businesses visit www.attisalat.com.ng slash easy business for more information Etisalat, now you're talking. Yes, welcome back. I decided to welcome you back this time by describing what this mother does so that you don't think that she's just a mom. When you see somebody's a mom, it's like that's all. Yetunde Williams, and I'll put her photo up before you meet her personally. She runs Lagos Moms Limited. And this company was set up to provide information, resources, and tools for moms, parents, and caregivers. They cover topics relating to education, parenting, nurturing, and ensuring the well-being of the child and the family unit. Now, Yetunde is the managing director of that company, and she holds a Bachelor of Science degree in, wait for it, economics and mathematics from the University of Pittsburgh and an MBA from the Yale School of Management. Now, Lagos Moms is the first blog dedicated to moms, parents, and caregivers, based largely in Lagos. Yeah, so now you get to meet Yewande Fisik. I mean, Yetunde, I call you Yeti. Yeti, welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank you. It's nice to have you. Thank you. The way you, were, you know, your story is a bit interesting because your mom is also an exemplary caregiver. Your mom was a civil servant. Yes. She retired when you were 10. Yes. To spend a little more time to help you. Come on, entrance. Did you, I mean, but then you wouldn't have thought about it. But now, looking back, do you think she was crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> but in hindsight, you know, I think that's what really set the standard for me in mm -hmm. terms of what, you, what being parenting. a mother means mm -hmm. and what parenting means. You need to be available, really, really plugged in to what your children are doing. Well, maybe she could afford to do it. Somebody was paying the bills or what? True. Oh, is it a sacrifice? It was a sacrifice, but, you know, um, it was a sacrifice. I mean, but she and my dad must have discussed it. In hindsight now, I realize it was a sacrifice. I mean, she was earning and she decided to step out of work first to focus on the children. Mm -hmm. I have an older brother, five years so old. So why you? You know, like I was joking earlier, my brother was a genius. <laughs> so he didn't need, <laughs> you know, but for me, she just felt like she needed to focus a bit more time on helping me to pass common entrance and get into secondary school. So, yeah. I mean, so be, parenting became a passion for you when you look back there, or what prompted that? Could you be living in this crazy city of Lagos first? <laughs> well, for me, I call myself almost like a Google mom. I'm always trying to find out, you know, I'm always trying to research about this whole parenting thing. You know, am I doing it right? What could I do better? What, what could was I do first differently? Like? It was very easy, actually. Did you get all the information from... I, when do you get your, when does water break <laughs> Google? <laughs> I literally was like that. And then I personally had, I didn't have a lot of the other, I didn't have morning sickness, I didn't have all of that. So but I had thought. some really unique things that weren't normal. For example, I had a bad taste in my mouth the whole nine months. So I was always asking people, what can I do? And they're like, hey, I don't really know. But in Googling, I found out that chewing ginger mm -hmm. helped me. And that's what I did for the nine months. And the day after I had my baby, the taste disappeared. disappeared straight. First thing I woke up in the morning, ah, I can taste my normal taste bud, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And then for me, though, I started Lagos Moms when I had my second child. I had him in, um, in D.C. And there was a website there called D.C. Urban Moms. And from there, I found a school for my older child. 
I found a pediatrician for my younger child. So I said, ah, we don't have anything like that in this part of the world. It would really be nice and cool to have a website where parents can, moms can connect. So that was where Lagos Mom started from, over three years ago. But you were, you were a paid job. I was, I was working full-time, full-time You were working full-time? Yes. And so when did you throw away that hat? And were you scared? What was a full-time job? I'm a real estate consultant. And that was so good money. It was, it was, <laughs> of course, good money, you know. Um, it was late last year that I started getting very... Um, Antsy. Yeah, you know, you just feel like... Ugh, it's almost like having a child where you were not nurturing it properly. And you get to a point where, you know, I can either feed this child to really blossom or this child continues to manage to survive. Mm. So that was when I decided, you know, I prayed about it a lot. I discussed with my husband, raising children in Nigeria and Lagos is not a small matter. So one income is not exactly um, easy. But mm. we, we decided I felt right. So this year has been the first year that I'm dedicated to Lagos. quick, this is the main job for now. For now. No, no, so that means you saw a need. I mean, yeah. what kind of stories do you get from moms? Mm. You know, because I'm, I'm sure in the process of doing that, little network, Lagos moms tweeting, talking. Mm. You said to do a blog. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it became so big. I said, you know what? Let me quit and focus on this because these problems are real. Yeah. What are the problems that you saw for working moms? Mm. The biggest one is this domestic matter. Mm. Every other mom I talk to, the next question is, do you know where I can find a nanny? It never passes that. Literally, if I was to do a survey, I would say, yeah, 50%. Every other mom I talk to is asking me for nanny. So is that's that the biggest. because vulnerable? Sorry? Does that make us very vulnerable? We're very vulnerable. And like I was saying to somebody, one of the biggest mistakes we can make as moms is to hire when we are desperate. When you are desperate, you, just, you can actually just hire anybody because you feel you need somebody in that moment. And many times that's when your um, decision-making process is at the lowest level. You know? But many of us end up looking for a nanny when you need a nanny. You don't exactly hire just to have exactly. a backup. You hire when you need. As a result, we know that it's very difficult to go. You can't exactly go to nannies.com and look at profiles and interview people, you know. Even if you are, could, it's like a nanny leaves today, you got to go to work tomorrow. To what do you do? So you have to find somebody. And then many times the word of mouth is in there, the resources are not there, the supply is not there. So you end up just hiring anybody that looks good enough. And What's then, your own personal experience with nannies? Uh, it's been mixed. It's been mixed. When I moved back to Nigeria about eight years ago, my first nanny was wonderful. She joined, with, she joined us. I didn't have a child at the time. Um, I had my child, and she applied for the job, literally. She said, you know, I can do this job. I said, eh. How did you find her? She, I found her for my mom. Once you again, thank you. For, I found her for my mom. My mom had done the research for me. So coming back with baby, nanny was, I mean, sorry, moving back, nanny was ready to move in. So anyway, she ended up becoming the nanny, and she was with us for four years. She left because she went to get married. She actually visited me last month with her son. So we had a good relationship. So I've had some really good nannies. Currently, too, I have some really great hands with me, you know, where my kids are happy to hang out with them. Um, but I've also had some horror stories. OK, so the question is, we should know that there are horror stories, but we have to manage them right. We have to manage them. So the typical, how would you describe the typical Nigerian mother today, what she's faced with? I mean, you've heard the kind of horror stories. Yeah. They decorate your kids in recent times. Yeah. Tons of okay. stories like that. It's not new. Okay. And some people blame the mother. How could you have left your kids just the day after. But can you identify with it? Totally. I keep saying that, you know, talking to somebody earlier, we cannot blame the moms. That's the worst thing we can do, is to point a finger and say, oh, you too, if you were... Because I hear some comments that if you were being a real mom, you wouldn't need a nanny. I think that's one of the meanest comments you can make. A mom is trying to do her best. Moms nowadays are working because a lot of us have to work, you know? So, I, I, yeah, we have to supplement. It's, it's difficult, it's expensive living in Lagos now. School fees are one thing, so many things we want to do. So, I or think. Or any other urban city for that matter. Any, exactly. Like I keep saying, this is Lagos moms. What, is a mom anywhere? Everywhere, moms are dealing with the same thing, you know? So, I don't think it's a unique problem to us. You remember the Ugandan story? Mm -hmm. I was in Uganda that the nanny was abusing the child, but it was caught on camera. Mm -hmm. So, there are certain things I think instead as a mom, we must look at how can we do this better? How can we continue to protect our homes and our families? Mm -hmm. And there are certain things we must do, which I know was talked about earlier, reputable sources, background checks, security cameras, and having support around the home. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, you hire a new nanny, you have to go to work. You are going to leave that child with the nanny, but perhaps there's grandma who can come over. At least for the first, for the first week or two. For the first two, you get comfortable. Maybe with nanny and child, you drop them in somebody's house. There are certain things we must also do to help to bridge the, um, mm -hmm. the gap of this exposure, really. Well, nannies are not the only things, though, that we suffer from. Yeah, the drivers, everything. the cooks, 
you know? Yeah. Oh, I mean, what do you think? I agree. The only thing is that nannies are in your house with your children. But it's everywhere. For example, with the drivers, I do know a particular situation where the driver was taking the boy, he picked the boy up from school, and was taking the boy um, to smoke. Um, Indian hemp. Um, I don't even know which one. But yeah, <laughs> Indian hemp, whatever. But he was taking the boy, and he, was, he introduced him to drugs, and the parents didn't know. And that was a driver who'd been with them for years. So it's like you said, it's not just nanny. It's about the whole domestic set up, the whole domestic staff issue. So what's, where does Lagos Moms come in, come in here? So what Lagos Moms does is, one of the things we do is, you know, there are many agencies, there are many um, resources you can use, for example, to find staff. But how do you find them, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know about them? One of the things we do is we have a lot of posts where we talk specifically about domestic staff, how to find <laughs> them, how to domestic. interview. <laughs> we call it the domestic staff issue because it's an issue. Even if you stay at home, you probably will still have domestic staff. Absolutely. If it's not your driver, it's your cook. There's somebody in your house that's a stranger in your home. Mm -hmm. So how do you interview? When you're interviewing, you have to make sure that you spend time to know that the person you're bringing into your home is somebody you should bring into so your home. So you're empowering the mothers and dads, really. Yeah, that's reason. why I say moms, dads, caregivers, anybody mm -hmm. who wants to say, ah, this parenting matter, we need some help. And I keep saying, I don't have all the answers. That's why we why it's I set a community. up It's a community. Mm -hmm. It takes a village like to a raise a child. Like a ginger experience, now you put it there. I put my <laughs> watermelon experience. Exactly. And, and you know, suddenly you all just start to learn from somebody else and you pick mm -hmm. something up. So we're Lagos moms, not only moms in Lagos, is it? It's not. It's <laughs> not. I know people say, well, that name, <laughs> yeah. oh, does it mean that if I'm a mom in Potakot or Abuja, I can't? No, the, the information there is... Is open it's to just everybody. a euphemism. It's just, yeah. Lagos just, is a euphemism for a cosmopolitan city. Basically, I keep saying that Lagos moms is a mom that's doing everything. You know, you are trying to look trendy. You know, you are taking the child to school after care. You are trying to lose weight. You are walking. There are many things that we are doing, but that's like you said, it's an urban mom anywhere. Urban moms. So anyway, we, I mean, but Lagos is eco. Maybe we should call it eco moms. Eco moms. There you go. Anyway, thank you, but you see, I, the more practical segment for me today, because it's an issue we're talking about at the end of the day, is to engage on the panel. So I'll take a break, and then I return with my other guests to join Yeti and I on the panel. There are business ideas, and then there are outstanding business ideas. The search is on again for the most outstanding business idea in Nanja in the Etisalan Easy Business Millionaire's Hunt Season 2. Think you've got a viable business idea that's an edge above others? Then enter it for a chance to win 2 million Naira grand. To participate, recharge 3,000 Naira on your Easy Business line. Dial star 345 star 3 hash to pay for 3 million month subscription text yes to 5885 to get a unique code and url with which you will submit your business idea the 10 best ideas will each receive 2 million naira cash grant the top 50 ideas receive free training at enterprise development center free office equipment and phones to be one to the easy business millionaires hunt season 2 empowering small businesses visit www.attisalat.com.ng slash easy business for more information Etisalat, now you're talking. Yes, welcome back. I have Yeti, Amara, and Kola still here with me. And in this segment, we're going to be looking at the why we end up in traps like we do, getting the wrong kinds of help, and then also what we can do about it. That's the essence from their different experiences. So I will start off with Kola, really, because, I mean, Kola is the only man here, as always. When I have only one guy, I start with him here. Men first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do wrong? Why do we always fall in this trap of getting bad helps? Well, um, one thing with helps at home, like from my own, the way I see it. Do you have uh, helps in your house? No, I don't. Why? Your wife must be a superwoman. My mother didn't have, so <laughs> she's learning from so my how mom. Does how does she do it? Tell us, that's where we should learn from. Well, she just, um, she made her, I mean, she just uh, trained herself to cope. We used to have, but um, they never stayed. So at the point, she just told herself, it's, there is no need um, going through this um, searching and um, leaving, searching and leaving. So she had to um, put up with it. And Did you do background checks on the people that you took? I'm putting you on the spot here. You see, the, 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 <laughs> you see there are two ways um, to eat. Mm -hmm. When you source for help, the way it's done is if you know from the source it's coming from, you know the mother of the, of the help, you know the father, hmm. then it's safer for you. 
unlike what we do, that a total stranger just walk up to us and tell us, oh, this is what I can do, this is where I used to be. And like we were joking when uh, we were Amara. off camera, mm -hmm. um, you asked them, um, give us the addresses of the people you worked with in the past. They so, they've oh, gone abroad. They've traveled abroad. <laughs> 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 and they are expatriates, yeah. they've traveled abroad. If it's a nanny, mm -hmm. even know? drivers. So, so I, I know, I, I, I knew the father, I knew the mother, I knew the siblings of the help, at least the last one we had before we said no more, you know. So um, the point is that um, since it's a necessity, let's always go all the hog to know these people. It's not just, um, you know, I don't know what happened. At least the last two instances of uh, kidnappings that happened, number one, the family sourced them from OLX and online. Well, from an online, you know, yeah. which is not the perfect thing to do. You understand? It's an open platform, so it's it's, it's not safe enough. Mm -hmm. And even if you had done that, before you can really um, integrate them into your family, you need to have done proper background check. So the, what's the point you're raising is that we must know the source, you must know where they are coming from. You must know the source, you must have enough information. About the person. About the person that will guide your decision on mm -hmm. whether he should stay or leave. Does that work for you, knowing the source, is that enough? Oh, well, yes. That's um, exactly what I said at the other um, interview. The source is very important. Now, when you get the source, what vetting process have you done as an agency or as an individual recruiter, as a family, to verify? Because you must verify. But on the that cases where, sorry, on the case where you verify and it's still bad? Well, the bad cannot be as bad as kidnap. Oh. Yes. The bad cannot be as bad as kidnapping, which is an extreme. Again, the bad may not be as bad as stealing, which some people worry about. You know, I mean, I usually... Uh, you don't harming your kids. Exactly. So the bad cannot go to that extent. The, 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 the scenarios you asked me earlier on, what are the bad stories? Yeah. The common stories, oh, I don't want to work again. That's fine. Once someone says, I can't work with you anymore, please maybe, maybe allow the person to go. Mm. You can't force someone to stay if they don't want to stay. You know, so when you talk about source, you talk about verification, vetting process, you must verify that all information given are true. Source, verification, vetting. Yes. Get it. Do you think otherwise? No, I because agree. Because sometimes even with all of those things, mm. you still get the wrong kind of help. But it depends on what, what is wrong. Uh -huh. yeah. What is a wrong help? It depends on what it is for the family. There are several things that could make it wrong for you. You know what I mean? And that's where the interview process, I think, is very important. When you're interviewing the staff, what do you want? What are you looking for? Don't hire somebody who doesn't like children or is better cleaning. But they can tell, you, you, they they they, they can tell you they like children. Is down to the interview. And I found that when I spend time interviewing, and I don't do it in one go, I don't interview you one day, like you, and say start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You will go and come back. I will, sometimes I will frustrate you with just saying, come tomorrow and bring parcel photograph. And we are bring this, bring that. They will, they will invariably see the children in the house. And many times my kids help me to decide though. <laughs> if they say, ah, that auntie, she coming to work for us. I'm like, okay. They are yeah, beginning feel, to warm up. There are sometimes they'll be like, I hope. I hope that auntie is not <laughs> coming to our house. And from there, I just end the conversation because you have to also listen to the children that they are coming to care for. So I use but them But technically, well. come on, you guys be real here. How many mothers have that luxury of the time to start looking at all of the... Are we saying we must make that time considering the kind of security that's why you have an challenges? Agency. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. why you have to verify your agency's process. Because what else do we do at the agency? We have them always coming and then we spend time you know, so if your agency is not trustworthy, then you have a problem. That's also a source, you know. So agency okay. is a source. A relative can be a source. So your know. friend Another can refer, friend, you know, yeah. source is important. So by the time you know, oh, what is at stake for your source? Mm -hmm. What do I, what does the Nani Academy have to lose if um, something goes wrong, yeah. a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is just casually referring someone to you to work in your home, and then the person disappears and will not be in the picture um, if something goes wrong, then that's not the right source. Well, only people has talked about money. How many people can really afford, because whatever it is you say, if I seek a professional service, like a nanny academy or a security check, it's going to cost me some buck. 
Absolutely. Well, if I'm going to talk on that, yeah. people talk so much about money. Yeah. But you see, you need to put a price on the things you will lose or the things you will suffer if you get a wrong person. Yeah. There are some things you can't quantify monetarily. You understand? Yeah, I'm sure the mother at the time that her kids were missing, if you give her 200 million, it won't solve her problem. Like, like the present one in the news, the kidnappers are asking for 30 million. Mm -hmm. How much would it have cost her to source from an agency that would have done the proper thing? How much would it have cost families to run background check? Mm -hmm. All those things, don't see them as extra cost. Always see them as investment. Exactly. And sometimes it's information, though, because I mean, that's why I'm pretty glad that Lagos Moms is here. It's information. Mm -hmm. How do people know that ex services like yours exist? This is what I was going to say. Is I have, um, it depends on when you say agency, I think there are different classes. I have yes, some agents that say, I call. Ah, my name is Brother Joseph. Thank you. They have a long list of names. Nice. agents I call pimps. They are pimps. No, they just that's bring why anybody. You so there's check a the background <laughs> of the agencies you are even also using. You understand, because you have a lot of um, scam um, agencies all over. So you just need to check. encourage best practices. Mm -hmm. Because what we are doing here, what we're discussing here, is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that is you know, universal, international. Mm -hmm. So you look at other countries. How are they doing this? Who are at the you know, top edge of the ladder in terms mm -hmm. of you know, proper nanny screening? Oh, yes, we know. Sometimes even CNN. You know, they will broadcast some horrible story of um, a nanny even killing children. Understand. But you know that those are incidents mm -hmm. that happen, you know, one of. We're not praying. We want a situation where there will be zero tolerance, fine. Mm -hmm. Zero incidents, fine. But then um, those incidents it just happen once in a long time. So what are we saying here? What's the most important takeaway from this discussion today? What's the most important takeaway for you and what you think people should take away from this? I think the most important takeaway is back to what we've all said, the source. Now, whether the source is an agent, word of mouth, it doesn't matter. What's important, you must verify the person coming to your house. I use, an age, I use a service called iCarella. I don't even get my nannies from her, but everybody I get, I send it to her. She's a psychologist. So she actually takes the time to assess the potential candidates and mm -hmm. talk to them and come back and give me a full report, which includes background checks and all of that. But I get a holistic picture before I decide to hire the person. So well, you time. guys are talking like every mother has the, 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 the leverage to be able to do this holistic picture. Pick the scenario. My nanny takes off today. I have to go to work. I've said that before. What do you do? I want to add to that. You have <laughs> crushes. You have crashes. If you cannot be sure of the stuff you bring to your house, please put them in the daycare. Exactly. Put the child in an after school. You don't have to have a nanny in your house. Absolutely. You don't have to. Take them to school. And a lot can. of schools offer after school services. Let me go back to one thing you do. I must make, you must clarify here. You said you must have a, a nanny and a help at different things. Could it yes, be in what are. we call them, how we treat them when well, it comes to nanny or even drivers or even cooks? Could it, could it come how to... How we treat them? Well, I mean, you call a spade a spade. If you want a nanny, who is a nanny? A nanny is someone who takes care of children. Who is a help? And what do you mean by help? Are you looking for a housekeeper, a washerman? All those are helps. So you need to always define what you want from someone you're hiring, just like you do for your staff in the office. Mm -hmm. you know, so the name matters, but the, more importantly, the outlining of the, you the know, key job. performance yes. indicators. Yes. Exactly. Even at home. Absolutely. Like, yes. <laughs> you know, you I say, this, this is what I want. Home. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But you see, is there something, you know, from your experience and what you've heard, that mothers always do wrong or hirers always do wrong that we don't get the best of our nannies or our cooks or our drivers? Is there something we do wrong? Some say you don't treat them like human beings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's a big part of it. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, sorry, I think that's one of the key things. We, we don't treat them as human beings. We don't, you always think um, you bought them with your money. We treat them like slaves. You know, you, you're ready to do, to make them do anything. And you know, those are some of the things that, um, you know, it's, it's like computer garbage in, garbage out. Some of them that didn't even have um, some wrong um, motive of doing mm -hmm. things. When you maltreat them, they want to hit back at you. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure Yetunde must have had stories of people who are not maltreated and yet they don't give you the best. Yeah. Moms were giving those stories. There's those stories too. There's some yeah. people who, you know what, there are some nannies who are just unhappy from the day they step foot in your house. They are just annoyed that they have to do this job. Mm -hmm. So somebody like that is already coming in with some, you know, 
maybe ulterior motives that they didn't even know that they could actually leave out. Mm -hmm. I found that. You have mm -hmm. some people who come in. And that's part of where it's back to this interview process. You just have to take the time. When you talk to somebody who's saying, oh, I'm doing it because, you know, you just get a sense. And you have some that say, I'm happy to do this job because I know it's helping me save for the next two or three years. I uh -huh. want to go back to school. Which takes me to the next point. Where is Amara may be in the best position to comment on that? Because when you take a nanny, it's like, it, it can be a profession. Absolutely. We don't see it as a profession here. It can be a profession. Can we give respect to that profession? Yes, we can. And it is a profession. In places like United States, Nani has been, you know, is it like that profession. here? Because I mean Well, here I would say that um, certain families have professionalized nannies in their homes. I for one, my nanny is professional. I don't go outside of the boundary of what she's supposed to do. I treat her as I ought to treat. You know, and that's why she can come to my house for the past 10 years, you know, to take care of my kids. I'm sure if she had been disgruntled... What do you do? Pardon? What, the, what do you do? Tell me, what do you do to How her? Do you do it? I, I treat her well, that's all. What's I treat her, well? Treating well means I pay her when I'm supposed to pay her. Treat well means I don't allow her work, you know, um, over long hours. Unstructured hours. hours. Unstructured hours. Treat her well means I also give bonus when she deserves it, like I celebrated her you know, when she was 10. Mm -hmm. How many people, you know, celebrate their nannies? We need to make them have some good feeling that, oh, you know, she, she, she didn't set out to work for 10 years. I'm very sure of that. <laughs> yes, she didn't well, set she out to work. But she must have been able to save a tidy sum working with you. And then she's put her life, you know, in order. So this can be a profession. I've also heard other stories of nannies working for some of my clients. We've been working for, um, for five years now at the Nanny Academy. And I am proud to say that we have other nannies who have been placed in home for four years running, five years running, you know, and they have good stories mm. to tell. So do you train the owners to, <laughs> I mean, the people who hire them, because that's also key. Well, we engage that. them. Yeah. We engage in, you know, lengthy conversations. So this conversation is just part of what I discuss with them. We talk more, they, they interview me as well. I interview them, you know, so we you have conditioned their mind. Yet, and uh, you will not get into trouble because you do your security checks. I will not get into trouble. <laughs> Nobody uh, will put me into words, trouble. Final words from you to our viewers. Well, I don't ever be in a hurry to get a stranger into your home until you know the background of this person. He or she is still a stranger. Make sure you don't um, compromise your background check, and that's the truth of it. Amara. And if you cannot handle it alone, use an agency. Agencies, apart from you know, providing with nannies, provide nannies with motivation, structure, gives them a sense of community and, you know, makes them see it as a profession. So if you can't do it alone, use an agent. What would you say? Um, I would summarize with those two. Moms, <laughs> you must do background checks. You must verify. Don't be in a hurry. Treat the nanny as an individual. Mm -hmm. Respect her and let your children also respect her. I think Beautiful. it's very important. I would say it doesn't matter the cost. Calculate the cost, what Kola said. To me, that's what's most critical. When you get a nanny or you get a help, whether it's a driver or a cook, you should be prepared to pay the price. If a woman has to go out, Make sure you have enough money to pay for a replacement and check them out. On that note, I'll say good luck on your nanny, cook, or driver hunting. And remember, it's all about you also doing the right things to ensure that you don't get into any trouble. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.